For several years, I've heard many people try to convince us to get into the raw milk movement. Today, this video is not trying to convince you one way or another about raw milk versus pasteurized milk, but rather to convince you to make an informed decision. So here's the reasons why on our homestead, we don't drink raw milk. In case you didn't know, there's actually a lot of tension between people who want the right to drink and sell raw milk and the scientists and doctors who are trying to convince us that there are better ways for us to get all the minerals and nutrients that we think are in raw milk. Now, I get it. For most of the world's history, we have lived on raw milk and it's only very, 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 very recently that we've started to alter our milk to make it safer to drink. So what is the difference? What has happened that requires us to pasteurize our milk now when really it wasn't that big of a deal? The big deal is that small farms like these homesteads used to be the way of life. Before grocery stores, before we had co-ops, this was the way that we did things. And the travel process between milk to cup was very, very short. In just a span of six hours, E. coli can grow from about 10 cells to billions of cells. It used to be that every family had chickens and they had their garden and they had co-ops with their neighbors next door and they would help grow their vegetables together. But that is not in our recent history. And so now we have these mega dairy industries that are providing milk for half of America. And what happens here is the transportation. And so the risk for raw milk isn't necessarily from teat to mouth. It's actually when it's packaged and when it's sent. And so we saw a huge uptick in all kinds of bacteria and viruses because of the increased travel time that happens when we have turned milk into a huge industry. So the, the short answer for us is that raw milk does contain a lot of bacteria and we are, don't bite my dress. <laughs> raw milk is just a wonderful breeding ground for a ton of bacteria and viruses. And we increase the odds that we are gonna get sick with those viruses and bacteria by allowing it to be transported. Now, a lot of states will allow the sale of milk as long as you label it not for human consumption, but we all know that that is just a workaround so that we can legally sell it and people can do whatever they want to do with it and ignore that label all they want. I'm not trying to convince you not to drink raw milk. There have been plenty of times where we have milked these goats and I chug it right back because there really was no time for E. coli to incubate inside that milk. But I do want you to make an informed decision today. I have found that a lot of people who are peddling raw milk and who are really trying to push their views on you, they belong to a certain crowd of people who are a little bit anti-authority, anti-establishment, stick it to the man, and who ignore other laws such as seatbelt safety because they don't want somebody to tell them what to do. So the question that I want you to ask yourself, do you really care about the nutrition that you think you're getting from raw milk? Or do you want to belong to a certain sect, a certain niche of people? Now that being said, do I believe everything the CDC is telling me? Do I believe the government is just batting a thousand and gonna follow all of their rules, uh, hook, line, and sinker? No, absolutely not. But there's a really big difference, and, and here it is right here. Try to stick with me. Just turn off your inner lawyer for just a second. The CDC it was required to post disclaimers. They are required to tell you the side effects. When I have gone to growers conferences, when I have gone to lectures and seminars, I hear a lot of people talking about the benefits of raw milk. Not one person mentioned the risks of consuming raw milk. There is no regulation for how it is transported. There's not enough regulation. There is regulation, but there's not enough going into it to make me um, truly and honestly believe that the people who have goats like I do are getting it cooled off in time putting it in a cooled, transported vehicle, and all those kind of things. So there's not enough regulations to make me trust it. While we're sitting here talking about trust issues, I know that there is a lot of hate for Big Pharma because they are a multi-billion dollar industry that thrives off of us being sick. But have you ever noticed that we kind of blindly trust the vitamins that we take? I just want you to consider our logic, our, our reasoning, our line of thought here, because we hate Big Pharma, and yet they are required to do so many studies. They pour a ton of money. They have a lot of funding into the trials that they're required to do, and they have to pull drugs that don't work. I have been, y'all, I'm a professional patient. Trust me when I tell you the amount of pharmaceuticals I have been on and um, how I have to go through rigorous processes in order, is the, is the goat licking your finger? Is yes. that why you're laughing? Yes. <laughs> My camera is. girl is giggling because the goat is licking her finger. <laughs> He's so cute. 
Oh, what was I talking about? Oh, and so they, they're required to do double blind test trials and have all kinds of studies done. And yet, and yet we trust vitamin companies like they are a nonprofit. Y'all vitamin companies are making tons of money off of us because they fear monger a little bit, but they don't, they aren't required to do any studies. Their vitamins aren't required to actually do what they are claiming to do because they say this has not been, uh, these, effects have not been studied by the FD. They have this little disclaimer on there that means basically I'm not responsible if this doesn't work. And so look at the way we trust vitamin companies that aren't required to do as much as Big Pharma does. And yet we hate Big Pharma because they're making so much money off of us being sick. So are vitamin companies. So are they. So look at who we're not trusting and trusting and just let's, let's hold up the mirror a little bit and just ask ourselves, why am I blindly trusting people when they say raw milk is good for me? Or why am I blindly trusting this vitamin company um, who is trying to sell me a <laughs> snake oil? So when it comes down to it, I, I want us to ask ourselves, do I really care about the nutrients that they're claiming that I'm going to get from raw milk? Because the kind of people that I see who are like raw milk, the government is lying to us. They're trying to suppress this. They're trying to control our food and all this kind of stuff. I don't see them making other radical health decisions. That's going to hurt some people's feelings. But, but honestly, if you live off of fast food and yet you are going to die on the hill of raw food, I don't think you care about your health as much as you think you care about your health, if that makes sense. But then also, if we want all the benefits that raw milk claims to give us, here's some of the claims. They say that um, a lot of the antimicrobial properties are stripped away, which makes sense because if we're killing bad bacteria, we're killing good bacteria, that, that makes sense. But they also say that we take a lot of our amino acids away, a lot of the vitamin D, vitamin A, vitamin E, our K2 and our B12, all of those. You can find those sources of food in higher quantities uh, from like salmon and your leafy greens and your nuts and your seed oils. Um, if you're worried about your vitamin A, you can definitely find that in other sources. Personally, I don't think that pasteurization strips milk of what we think it does. I understand that like when we take antibiotics, it kind of messes with our gut health a little bit and we have to up the probiotics a little bit because if it's going to kill the, the bad bacteria, it's also killing the good bacteria. But as far as taking away all the vitamins and trace minerals, I don't believe that. I don't believe that at all. So, but if you were very worried about it, there are safer ways to consume those vitamin and minerals that you think. Raw milk needs to come with a disclaimer. If you are choosing to consume raw milk, just know that you're putting yourself at risk for viruses, bacteria, and a host of other kinds of things that could make you sick. We are not the only country that pasteurizes our milk. There are so many countries that even ultra pasteurize it and make it shelf stable in a box to absolutely rid any um, chance of getting salmonella or E. coli. I do love the homesteading movement and I do love trying to get back to our roots. And I've said this before, I think there is a syndrome, I'm gonna call it the good old day syndrome, where we think everything prior to recent history was just so much better. It is very easy to romanticize the past. We even do this about our own childhood. Man, when I was a kid, we didn't have any of these problems. Yeah, you did, but you were a child and your world was very small and you were protected from those problems, most likely. Not everything about the past is better than, the, than modern day. When people say, man, I really wish I could have lived at the time of the Vikings or lived at the time of the Wild West because they think it was less complicated, less burdened, hi baby so sweet. That is simply untrue. Every person in the history of forever has struggled. There have been so many illnesses and disease and bacteria that are conquered thanks to modern day science. And I think with the homesteading movement that is just sweeping the nation, which is such a beautiful thing. Trust me. I mean, we're out here doing it. We obviously love it for a reason. I think we need to, to hold that in a steady tension with enjoying the modern uh, conveniences of of understanding science so it is there to help us it's there to save our lives like I said earlier I'm not trying to convince you to stay away from raw milk I just want you to be informed because I don't hear a lot of raw milk advocates warning you what could happen if you have not had E. coli I am very happy for you I have had it many times if you have not had salmonella I'm so happy you've never been through that pain I can hear the little ca -ca 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 in the background now, I'm not always going to listen to Big Pharma. I'm not gonna always listen to the CDC. Do they have 
something to gain by lying to us? Probably, that's just human nature. But I'll tell you who I'm gonna listen to. I'm gonna listen to moms that have lost children. I'm gonna listen to doctors who have tried to help those children who are on their deathbed. I'm gonna listen to scientists who realized what they were seeing through the eyes of a microscope and thought to themselves, I have got to tell the world. Those are the people who still have it in them to die. The guy is eating the paper. <laughs> Thank you, Peggy. <laughs> Those are the people who have kept their humanity. Those are the people who are still passionate about what they do. That being said, I want you to make the decision for yourself. These are why we don't drink raw milk. It's just not worth it to me. If I'm really worried about those nutrients, I'm gonna have a gigantic kale salad with tons of salmon, tons of nuts, tons of oranges and citrus. That's what I'm gonna do to replace all the minerals and vitamins that I think are being lost in the pasteurization process. Ow, ow. <laughs> that being said, our goats need some attention. And uh, we're gonna sign off for here. Thank you for struggling through this with me as I try to explain myself to people who ask me why I don't drink raw milk. That's all for today's video, and I hope this helps you to make an informed decision. Cheers.